Okay. Good, good. I guess we didn't run out of wine yet. <laughs> you hear from the sound. Um, I explained a little bit about what we're doing here. Mainly, we're interested in catching a grizzly bear, and we decided in order to catch the grizzly bear, we had to set the stage because those grizzly bears are hard to get out of the woods. And we gotta sort of edge them on out easy. Uh, is everybody there? I don't even know if there's any grizzly bears on that side. Vinny, you're there. Peter, are there grizzly bears behind you? Okay, how about the drums? Is there any? No worries back right there. All right, here we go. Closet. Grizzly bears are hide underneath the bed. Well, this cat was so paranoid about grizzly bears, he had little teeny tiny grizzly bears that hid behind the bristles on his toothbrush. He had smaller grizzly bears even that hid under the hairs on grandmother's face that you didn't talk about. And all those grizzly bears, they just growl all over the place. And he laying there in bed and he hiding under the pillows. He hiding under the covers and pull them way up top of the grizzly bear couldn't get them. You look out just for me, see any grizzly bear there. I mean, what you do is set the foot of his bed. <laughs> Ain't his daddy. Ain't his mama. He's a grizzly bear. He say, Row! He could not be scared of grizzly bears all his life. He'd have to go out and find either a place to hide from those grizzly bears, or he'd have to meet that grizzly bear on his own home territory and do him harm. So he put a little gun, a little knife in his pocket, and he went trailing out. He got on his bicycle, he rode all the way to California. He said, maybe if I join myself up with a motorcycle gang, that grizzly bear will be frightened to death of the motorcycle cats, and he won't come around bother me. He went looking for the biggest, baddest, worstest, most terrible, mean, and nefarious motorcycle gang in the world. That's what he found. That was their name. They had it on the back of their black leather jackets and brass studs, and they kept two brass stud makers in business just making a stud to make that name in the back of their jackets. And he walked up to the leader. He said, hello, leader. I won't join up with your gang so that grizzly bear can't get a hold of me and eat me and do all terrible things to my body. He said, sure, you can join us, kid. You just got to fight Teeny Tiny over there. He looked over, and Teeny Tiny was the meanest of them all. He weighed 714 pounds. He had a mini bike with a jet engine under it. A lot of pickup on that bike, man. He could go in so fast, so far, he had to wear cast iron underwear. In case he wanted to stop, he just slid off the back of the bike and let sparks fly three or four counties. Well, he looked over that grizzly bear coming down the hill on a Honda 50, and he looked a teeny tiny, and he decided on the grizzly bear. The grizzly bear decided on all of them. <laughs> he came roaring in, and he said, Rah! Well, there were motorcycle cats flying in every direction, and that old grizzly bear, he right out on their tail. This cat, he ran inside a church. He figured a lot of people hide in a church. Why shouldn't he? He was hiding under a pew, and this cat came walking up to him in a Zorro suit. He was all beautiful, hanging down black then. He said, can I help you? And the cat said, I'm afraid of the grizzly bear. The cat said to him, you don't have to be afraid of nothing in here. You just join on our society, and we'll take care of all your needs. A sign on the dotted line, become part of us, and you can hide here forever. Just then, while he was talking, the grizzly bear came in the back of the church. This cat looked up. This priest-type cat, he saw that grizzly bear. 
I tell you folks, he ran over four baptismal fonts, 16 silver candlesticks, four choir boys, and an associate pastor on the way out the back door. He showed up, did the grizzly bear say, Rah! He hadn't gone too far when he decided that wasn't the way he could operate at all. He had to go face that grizzly bear. He hiked his little body down to Louisiana. He was looking all around for that grizzly bear. He went up a tall, tall, tall mountain looking for the grizzly bear. Kept slipping in and sliding up that mountain. He got to the top and there was this great big tree. And you know who's behind that tree, don't you, Sharon? Yeah, one Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, baby. Just then up from behind the tree came the grizzly bear, and he was 47 feet tall. He had yellow teeth, because he never brushed them. He had red eyes, because you know what he was doing behind that tree, huh? <laughs> he was very hip there, boy. He had snaggly, faggly hair, because he never combed it. He looks like a football player going out of the shower. Yeah. Look down at this cat, he'd say, you ready for this now? Say, <laughs> Well, the cat couldn't have none of that. He had to get over there. He had to get away from that bear. So he pulled his portable skateboard out of the back of his pocket. He went slipping, sliding down the hill. They were going 412 miles an hour down that hill now. Going past Maserati. He was going past Yamaha. He was touring down that hill. And went past that old bear in his Honda 50. <laughs> He failed to negotiate a very dangerous curve and he crashed through the front door of this big old white house. And inside that house there was a meeting order. Let's keep everything exactly the way it always has been, the way our grandpappies built it with a sweat of their brow and the muscle of their arm society. <laughs> they were sitting around there painting each other red, white, and blue. They were grooving on a mother. They had a mother stuffed in the closet and they were just hanging there and they were grooving on her. They were eating apple pie, and he's in there. They run out of apple pie, but the cat came. He walked through the door. He said, I got the pie here from Mother. What do I do with them? And they say, just put them up against the wall there, Mother Trucker. <laughs> yeah, and he did. And just at that point, the bear came through the door. I tell you folks, there was apple pies. There was Mother's. There was America Love It or Leave It stickers. There were 47,000 red, white, and blue people heading out every window, every door. All the band did was say, He got a little further down the hill and he met a, met a bunch of freaks. They were all sitting around. They were beautiful cats. You know. They had hair way down to their whatever. And they were all wearing beads and sitting around a big circle. They passed around his funny little pipe and breathing deep and kind of funny. And just like, sort of thing. And they were saying things like, oh, wow. <laughs> they all say, oh, wow. They said that for 14 days. Oh, wow. Just then the leader of the group stood up. He was the most articulate cat they ever found. He flunked out of four Ivy League colleges, dropped out of three state universities, and was about to liberate the local nursery school. <laughs> he was standing there looking around when the bear came through the back door. And being as articulate as he was, he looked up and he said, say, oh, wow, that's heavy. The bear, he said, Rah. I said, he said, Rah. I said, he said, Rah. Jumping out the door, their eyes were looking like the road maps to Red China, and they're running down the road so fast, so furious. Hair and cigarette papers flying in the air, and bottles of patchouli tripping over there. They were doing 
doing all kinds of weird things and the cat, he finally had enough. So he said to himself, he said, he said, whoa. He said, whoa, baby, I can't run anymore. He said, I went away from this bed too long already. I can't run away from this bed anymore. So he reached in his back pocket and there was a full handed sodium pistol that his green bat had given him in case he ever met up with a sitch eyed patient just like this. He reached over that pill here in the pistol, he pointed at the bear and the gun said, ka oh, and the bear said, oh, let me fall down. And he start walking towards that old bear. He walked right up to that bear and he reached in the back of his pocket and he pulled out a pearl handled Freudian knife that his grandmammy had given him just in case he ever walked into a situation just like this. He walked up to that bear and he started cutting along the dotted lines. <laughs> yeah. He started peeling back all that bear fur. He peeled it all back. He wanted to see what it was he'd been scared of all his life. The thing that had frightened him to death, frightened me to death, frightened everybody to death. And he peeled it back, Lord God, right in the middle of that bear. There was a full color, full size portrait of Spiro Diagony. He said, Rah! Rah! 